Look! And the lump is gone! Beauty! Steve here, Shen RC. And I'm here with the Gen 8. And what I want to do to this, these guys know there's on the bottom of this beauty here, it's got this lump sticking out. So today, I'm going to take care of that lump sticking out the skid plate, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So stay tuned. Okay, here's what we got to do. I marked this with a marker. I don't know if you guys could see it, but that's what we have to remove that lump and to do that first we're gonna have to unscrew the battery tray here I think there's one two three four five screws then one here on the chassis so I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that right now can see it's held in by four screws the center so I'm gonna unloosen that and see how high it could come up first of all before I even do this see if it's possible to lift this up a little bit All right, it lifts up. Oh yeah. So I guess I would have to lift this up. Let me see how much here. Like about that much. So now, I'm gonna have to grind this off here with like a Dremel or something or cut it. So I'm gonna do that now. Check that out. You want to get this smooth as possible. I have to check it with something. Scrape this across. Shows you the high spots. The ideal thing would be to take this piece out and just do it all but it's a pain in the ass to take the whole chassis apart so that's why I'm not going to do that. I got to check how flat this is. I got to find like a little piece of plexiglass or something to test it real quick so I'll be right back. Okay I got this little plastic piece to just test it.
Should be good enough for when I cover that with a metal piece. I'm gonna do that next. What I'm gonna use to cover this hole up is on your baseboard heaters where they connect the two pieces, they have these things here that snap on and hold the two pieces from each side together like a seam cover. And it's like, it's pretty good steel. I used it on stuff before. This is like a plastic little coating on it. They sell them in all different colors and stuff. But I'm going to use this and I'm going to cut something out and make it fit on there. What I did here guys was I used a piece of paper and I traced it out and cut out a little section that fits over there for the size I need. So now I just got to cut the shape out of that little piece of steel I showed you guys. And that way I'll have something to mount it on the bottom here. I got everything set up here. I put my uh, template on the uh, metal so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Do the same with this side. And there it is. I'm going to have to flatten it out. And let's see how it fits. This will go right across here and cover that up. Just like that. So I'm going to go flatten this out and get it to fit properly. Here it is all prepped up. I rounded an edge on it so that way I slip over stuff easier. So that way when I mount it on like this, it'll work perfect. How I'm going to hold this piece on, I degreased this and I dulled up the back of this metal. And I did this before on a lot of crawlers. I'm just going to go in there with this goop or shoe goo glue. You put it on here. You hold it on. Then you go around. Then you go around from the inside. And put a bead around there. And this won't come off unless you really want to pull it off. I've done this before and it works great. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I got that goop glue on everything. Don't worry about having a lot on. You could wipe it off. Now I'm just going to place it on where I want. That looks good. Use a little spit. Smooths it out. Any little bit that's sticking out will come off anyway on the trails, or you, you could just pull it off. But hold it down for a while. Alright, I'm going to let this dry now. I just wet my finger with some spit and I go around there and smooth it out. There it is. Now you just got to let this dry up. And then I'll get on to the next steps. Alright guys, there it is. The metal sheet is all on and dried. It's flat now. I'll show you the inside. That's what it looks like on the inside. Now I found for mounting the transmission back, the center trans, I found these Traxxas, these end rod, the balls for the Traxxas vehicles. I guess they're the one tenth scale ones. I found them in a box and I'm going to use them to space out underneath there to raise this up a little bit. And you just got to use longer screws also. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I got my hardware here, my screws and the metal balls. And I'm going to put the transmission in. 
first. I'm going to use a little dab of grease on here to hold the balls in place. I applied the grease and I'm going to stick on the spacers now. This is a sticky grease. I use the Tamai anti-wear grease. Just make sure they're in line. All right, now I have to line up the marks I made on here. I don't know if you guys could see them. I made marks to match up. Just like that. I'm gonna, this is going to be tricky. I gotta try to hold this transmission up and I gotta get this little piece here in. To the right position. Here it is. Everything seems to be in place. Now I'm just gonna hold it above it like this. I'm gonna get my screws put one in at a time just thread it a little little bit just as I suspected <laughs> easier said than done there it is All right, they're all buttoned up. Center transmission's in place. Now on to the next step. All right, it's all in right now. You can see it. Now, I'm gonna mount the battery box probably in the same way and maybe lift up the back of here. And I'm gonna cut out a mark here for the transmission. I marked it right here and here. I'm gonna cut this out. So that way the center trans could come up. Here it is guys. In the battery tray. I cut out the hole. That I marked. Just like that. I'll show you up close. And I also ground the U over here for the U joint in the back. I used one of them Dremel. Uh sand drums and I just ground it in I didn't go all the way through it's pretty thick and that makes this clear and actually guys I think I'm gonna be able to put this on just like stock and use my battery pack in here just like that so I'm gonna screw it in and see how it works but I did on this top piece here that little screw, I just slightly went over the top and flattened it out a little bit. I don't think you really have to. I just did it for the hell of it. Just made it a little flatter. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this on. And see what happens if it works. And that's all there is to it folks you can see over here this little bit of the gearbox up here is sticking up higher 
but everything else is under just that one spot so I'm gonna put a battery pack in here real quick just to see And there it is it fits and I run these NIM packs so I'm sure a lipo will fit if it doesn't you could always just raise up the back a little bit with a washer underneath to make that lower by the screw by the center gearbox I showed you before and I'm gonna turn this on and see what happens now all right I got my radio but it would help if I plug in my uh, ESC over here into the receiver first because I forgot to do that now let's plug it in everything's working everything's working and look at that guys no more lump hanging off the bottom of this chassis Smooth right across. Works like a champ. Everything went back stock with just a little bit of modifications. The, the battery didn't get raised up high or nothing. Like I said, I'm using these packs because I always use NIM packs mostly in my crawlers. So. I think a, a lipo will fit in there also because there's a little room left and right and it'll just go a little bit to the left probably with that little bit of a lump raise there from the uh, center gearbox screw and like I said if you can't get it to fit put washers under these screws a little bit and raise it up all a little bit in the back and it should lower this down and it'll work but Mine's working like a champ now. In fact, I'm going to put a lipo in right now and see if it works with that also. I'm going to try to put a lipo in. Only thing I see is, like I said before, this top screw mount for the transmission in the center raises up. But I'm pretty sure this will fit in anyway, so let's try it. This is a hard pack. So it looks like with the hard pack, it's probably hitting that little piece over here, but you could still use it and run it like that. Probably with a soft pack lipo, it's probably even a little bit skinnier, so it may not hit it at all. Guys, I just want to show you that the battery lies flat in the truck. I noticed in my video that I must have had the tie wrap on the front of the battery tray was down inside the battery tray and I was on top of that with the battery so the front was lifted up so you could see all like this with what I did the battery lays flat in there now still just like stock so nothing changed what happened to me was this little tie wrap there was flipped down and I had the battery on top of that and it lifted it up. But I'm going to show you something else too while I'm at it. You could do this other ways if you wanted. I'm thinking you could put these straps the opposite way through a hole here and here and you could lay your battery flat across the back. And you probably could put the strap here and here and do the same flat across the front if you wanted to. But I don't even want to bother because it'll probably be higher in the front if you do that. And in the rear it'll probably be lower you could probably put it. But I like it the way it is in the center better. And it, nothing changed from stock. It's still mounted in the same position so no height change at all. 
So there you have it guys, everything's in the stock position, everything went back stock after the modification. So it works perfect. And there you go, once again, the bottom with the hump gone. Beauty! Guys, hit that thumbs up for me if you like the video. I appreciate the support. And I appreciate all the guys commenting on my videos. I really appreciate yous. We'll see you next time.